facilities that we currently have were conceived of more than 30 years ago. The population of these islands was much smaller and the demands for waste management were a lot less. Technology was, was um, not what it is now. And so we have to devise a proper national waste management strategy and system to cope with the needs with respect to waste management, not just for now, but for the foreseeable future. And when I say that, I mean 25, 30 years hence. So one of the greatest challenges for my administration has been dealing with the public perception that all we were doing was simply revisiting old reports that had already been um, repaired and essentially we were just spinning wheels and doing nothing. So the greatest challenge I think for us was getting people to understand that what we need is a national waste management strategy. Not one that just deals with fixing the dump, but one that deals with reducing the amount of waste that we put into any landfill. Because even if we were to close the current landfill, there would be a requirement and not change the system, there would be a requirement for another massive landfill somewhere else. So the strategy we've employed, which is a, a comprehensive one, is by using a, a variety of means and methods, uh, from composting to recycling, reducing the amount of, of waste that's actually produced, a waste to energy facility. All of those are aimed at ultimately reducing the amount of waste that goes into any new landfill by as much as 95%. Well, I think what need, really needs to be emphasized and the public to appreciate and know is just how much improvement has taken place in the landfill over the past two years. What I've learned now is just how much things can be controlled when you manage the landfill very actively. What exists there today is not what it was two years ago. Now, much of the exposed garbage has now been covered and compacted so that the risk of fires and anything happening there now is, is greatly diminished. And aesthetically, it's, it's uh, a lot more pleasing to look at, look at if you can say looking at a gar um, what is effectively a, a landfill uh, is, is something pretty to look at. But no, just really that the, 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 um, the fact that the garbage is now covered and is being, that the landfill is actively being managed and worked is I think a huge improvement for, for us. Um, and we need to continue to do that as we continue to manage the, uh, the implement the ISWIMS project and uh, ensure that uh, you know, the garbage is properly treated and, uh, and covered. Well, we've cleaned up the properties all around us which are now fenced up uh, that ha used to have large piles of debris. Uh, we've painted the entrance and we need to do some more painting to improve it. We've got parking area fences installed and a tire capture zone uh, here for uh, removing tires from the public and taking them back for processing. People that use this drop-off used to have to stand in water uh, pretty much every day when a storm hit. Uh, we've uh, had island paving grade the, uh, grade the entire area so that uh, the water flows into a deep well, drains immediately, and it's paved and it's a proper surface in which to, uh, to, for traffic to move around, which improves safety as well. We're also uh, protecting the edge of the uh, concrete drop zone there with, uh, with angle iron uh, to stop the chipping, and we're about to paint the upper surface so it's nice and uh, easy to see and fluorescent for people during off hours to drop off their weight, especially during the, uh, the evening. Um, we are also collecting recyclables uh, in this depot area, uh, this enclosure. Here we are now at the uh, beginning of the landfill itself. Uh, as you can see, we've created a whole new road circulation system here to uh, improve safety to uh, customers and to uh, uh, have better control over trucks of uh, materials being brought into the landfill. It's a one-way system. It's a little bit longer and uh, traffic has to be a little more patient. They drive one way around the landfill and they come to what we call the tipping face 
where they dump their loads. It's a much more restricted area and uh, the waste going in the ground is controlled into a much smaller, thicker face of the landfill. As you can see right across the opening there, that's where the old road used to be. It used to be a double lane straight up and straight down. But we need that volume, that area, uh, to, uh, to be used for all the waste that you can see there now and which continues to go up until we expand our landfill to the west. The tires have been used to border and to direct traffic in the direction we want and to reduce again the, uh, the concern of people going over the side. To my right, the big blue machine with the big, uh, big blade on it with the uh, spiked wheels is our compactor. And this is one of the major pieces of equipment that's purchased in the last year and a half to improve the operation of the landfill. Its job is to go back and forth over layers of the garbage to pack it as tightly as possible and to maintain as much landfill capacity as we can. The, uh, the beautiful thing about this is that we truly are recycling the tires. The tires are going to be used in developments on the island and uh, will be used as fill material. So the uh, contractor in a sense that is carrying on the development is saving money with using the tire, recycled tire parts while we are able to get rid of it out of the landfill. Well, I'm standing beside Susan Mack here, and she's the lead hand and uh, basically managing the operation of our waste oil and pad and, and recycling system. Uh, all of the red bin uh, containers here, storage tanks, and green ones have all been repainted. And the repainting of them has extended the life of them many years as a result, saving the government quite a bit of money. In addition to that, we've revitalized the, uh, the hut that's uh, being used to uh, house the uh, operations people and, uh, and the shipping container. The entire pad, as you can see here, was also clean, cleaned up. It took a lot of power washing. And uh, the purpose of this, of course, is to recycle the entire country's oil supply is short of uh, CUCs. And uh, I don't know how many millions of gallons over the years has, has been recycled, but it will be up there in that. But uh, we do the vegetable oil from the restaurants, and we also do, all, of course, all the automotive oil across the country. It gets tested, it gets dispensed into different size. There's a, a significant testing protocol required before the United States will accept it in there for recycling. And uh, then that is then put into containers through these large containers over there and shipped on a ship to the U.S. for recycling. This piece of equipment is our tire shredding machine. It was sitting for almost 10 years uh, out of operation, unrepairable. We have now done over a thousand tires. We've had a breakdown with it, but it's not a big deal. and We have it repaired shortly, but we have done over a thousand tires incoming. We have two problems with tires. We have the new tires coming in all the time, and we've got the pile that's so big that it's overwhelming. We have a contract to deal with the big pile. This will take over the, uh, the uh, tires coming in on a regular basis so that we never have those piles again. Well, this is uh, on my right here, the big yellow uh, machine there is the Beast uh, wood chipper. And it uh, is there for the purpose of chipping wood waste up into smaller particles to be used as mulch. We use it for our Christmas tree uh, recycling program. We also use it for a lot of that uh, material brought in by landscapers off into the back of the landfill. We look, we, this is going to be one of our key pieces of equipment for future composting operations with the yard waste. Well, the final change that we're talking about that's occurred over the last year is really about people and the team. What we've done is we've transformed Dispatch, where a large uh, uh, bunch of uh, the solid waste group work, and we're also improving offices down at the landfill. As you can see, it's all painted up, new offices are being installed, and we have programs in place to encourage teamwork. We also have a new training center and an area where the staff can eat, eat their lunch. And that room over there, we've created, we've created an area where people actually can educate themselves with information and, uh, and watch YouTube videos of, uh, of uh, safety and, and things like that. Uh, we're only just entering into these steps uh, now in this coming year. We're looking forward to great progress in future, but it does improve morale and people are proud of where they work. But I think this is one of the biggest um, issues from an infrastructure standpoint that the country has to deal with. It is very challenging, not just because of the, of the technical issues, but because of the financing and the finance um, structure that has to be developed to deal with this. Many administrations, I wouldn't say they've ducked the issue, but they haven't been able to resolve the issue. 
Well, under the framework for fiscal responsibility, we have a procurement process that um, involves a number of steps. We have to make sure at the very be beginning we have a strategic outline case to support proceeding with the project. We also had to get the cabinet policy guidance, which is the policy underpinnings of the project. One of the things that we identified very early in the process that was a gap is that we didn't have a national solid waste management policy. So we didn't have a guiding document to tell us as a country what we wanted to achieve in the area of waste management. So that was something that we did fairly early on. Um, we had the public consultation and we were able to arrive at the country's very first solid waste management policy. ISWIMS, the Integrated Solid Waste Management System, is a waste management system that's integrated so it follows what uh, an international waste hierarchy uh, which follows the four R's, which is reduce, reuse, recycle and recover. So this whole system is put together on that premise, so what we can reduce and reuse, we're doing. We set up recycling and composting so we can turn materials into, or into usable products and compost into uh, a usable uh, finished product and then handle what's left over in a waste energy facility to produce energy. So we're doing it in an integrated fashion. We're not doing one or the other, we're doing it all to get to a maximum diversion from landfill. There's been huge investment in the fleet. I know our director, working with the uh, chief officer and the premier, have, have uh, amazingly brought huge amounts of capital in to replace a lot of the old equipment. So we have new garbage trucks, we have new wood chippers, we have uh, uh, new excavators and, and various other pieces of equipment. The biggest thing, of course, as I mentioned earlier, is the Aljon uh, landfill compactor. That's buying us more time on this landfill as we get our new systems in place. It's evidence that there is real progress on this um, particular project. The project will by no means be completed by the end of this term. There is a need for continued patience to ensure that what we do deliver for Cayman is fit for purpose, does last in the way that we need it to last, and that it is affordable. It uh, places Cayman in a position where we have a state-of-the-art waste management system and one that is, is capable of enduring for the benefit of all who live in Cayman and love Cayman and that it is a system that we won't have to be fixing, looking for a major fix again in five or ten years but is one that will last for at least another quarter of a century.